But we're here today to talk about uh, cultivation. So I, I, the first uh, pieces of equipment that we want to talk about are the, the tine weeders. So by uh, tine weeding the day you plant, it guarantees you at least one pre-emergence tine weeding because we weather can come along and steal the next opportunity. Then you would come back and do a second pre-emergence tine weeding. You have to know where your sprouts are, though. You, you can't be tagging your own seeds. So you've got to know where they are and stay above those seeds. The other big reason for tine weeding the, the day you plant is to, is to level the field. And uh, there are essentially two different postures for this tine. If the tine is more raised and the tine is angled down and away from the tractor, I call that pulling the point. That's very beneficial pre-emergence because it does a very good job of leveling the soil. It, it bulldozes the soil. Uh, Post-emerge, we like to stand the tine up and, and push the point. And the reason for that is, it, it, in some respects, it's more aggressive with respect to the soil. It can get in and, and penetrate the soil better. But it's less, it's less harmful on the plant because it doesn't bulldoze. Yeah, rotary hauling, you know, if, if this is your tool, three to five days after you plant, be on it. Don't wait too long. Watch that weather. You'll have that weather map on your phone so that you know where you're at. And, you know, if, if you see rain coming, a week of rain, three days of nice weather, rotary hoe it twice. Taking it okay, it's getting good action, plenty of depth. You know, he's probably got that all the way down, set all the way down. And hey, if that's what uh, you need to do to get the weeds, you know, that's great. A lot of beans that are still gonna come at some point. It's gonna be a real uneven stand, but. Sure. Well, I thought it did a good job, you know, I kept my eye on several key places here and I don't think it tore one out. But once that bean gets in the ground, you know, it's pretty hard to tear it out. You got to be recklessly driving to tear it out. And, and most weed seeds, not all of them, but most, are going to germinate in the top, say, inch and a half, two inches of soil. And so what that means is, uh, if you've got weed seeds buried down there, you know, if you plow them under or, or they're just three, four, five inches deep, if you leave them there, they're going to stay there. They're not going to germinate and come up. And so, like people were talking about with the rotary hole, the tine weeder, shallow cultivation, if we can continually work that top inch and a half, we're going to kill all the weeds there, but we're also not going to bring new weed seeds up. Um, and, but if we do do that, we're just we're, we're bringing more weed seeds to germinate throughout the season and that's something I think of when I think about hilling you know getting uh, weeds in the row to me is like the holy grail you know how do you do it and um, and burying is a, is a great technique but to me it's something you want to do later in the season because you're also throwing weed seeds right in the row and if you wait till your crops you know big enough and, and can shade out those weeds that's that's not a, as much of a concern but but at a smaller stage I don't want to be throwing uh, more weed seeds into the row to germinate. So a big a common thing in uh, weeding tools is, is the S-tine, right? The Danish S-tine, which is nice. It lets you, um, if you hit a rock, instead of breaking something, it's going to flex around it, right? Um, and I think it's real popular on field cultivators or secondary tillage for that reason. And one thing that that, that does, though, is as it flexes and as it meets resistance in the ground, that knife uh, changes angle, okay, and it, it, as that as that tine is bending, and as it changes angle, uh, it, it digs deeper and deeper into the ground. And again, what I'm learning about in, in Europe is that they they spend a lot of effort on tooling to go really shallow, for the reasons that, that I'm talking about. And so one thing that they're changing uh, instead of S tines is something like this. And you can see it's kind of like a hybrid S tine, where it's got a straight shank here. Um, but also a spring. And what that lets happen is that it's, it's a good sort of um, 
happy medium, okay? So if you hit a rock, you still got some um, some flexibility, you know, so you're not going to be breaking shares all the time. At the same time, uh, the straight shank keeps a much more consistent depth. So this is this is kind of our go-to is uh, is a shallow angled sweep. Okay, then we've got uh, these side knives. You can see that the shaft is cranked out over to the side um, so that there's more room for the crop to kind of canopy out without hitting that. Um, we like this for trying to get close to the crop when they're younger, like we're saying, well, we don't want to throw soil. Um, it shields, it shields uh, the crop from any soil falling in as we're going. And you can see that um, uh, both the, the edge that contacts the soil is sharpened, but even up onto the side. So that hopefully if we get crusty conditions, um, we're not pulling out um, in, uh, whole clods of soil, you know, that have the crop in it from the row. Um, now for when things are very small or say uh, vegetables, this is a down cut knife. Okay, so again, for any type of um, soil crusting, um, you know, the thicker the crust, you know, maybe you've experienced this. I have probably too many times than I want to, but as you're going through, you can pull out a whole chunk and you just pull out, you know, the whole root ball of your soybean or so with that. So this is a down cut knife. So just like a knife, you know, when you're cutting a piece of cake, it's gonna cut the soil as it, as it moves forward um, and, and try and cut that clod rather than pull it up. And you can see that the angle, just like all these tools, the angle on that sweep is uh, very slight, you know, so it's gonna, it's gonna pull up just a little bit of soil and hopefully allow us to, to go as shallow as we can. We have all different sort of sizes. Uh, this is our largest size. This is a medium size, more for vegetables, uh, tighter row spacing, and there's even a smaller size. And again, talking about different options to meet the conditions, um, each color is a different uh, hardness of plastic. Okay, so red's our hardest, it's a little thicker. Yellow is middle, that's what we use most often for row crops. And then orange is the softest. So say, if you've got a heavier clay, you might want a harder plastic. If you've got a sand that, that doesn't crust as hard, you know, maybe you'd want orange to be uh, lighter on your crop. So the ground drive spikes will contact the ground and those are gonna turn the fingers. And what the fingers do, um, it's, a, it's a different mode of in-row weed control. So instead of having to throw soil in the row to bury weeds, they can flick weeds out. Um, and the other thing they can do um, is just keep that in-row area real moist and break the capillarity so that um, hopefully our crop is rooted more deeply and it's gonna have access to that water. But if we keep that top inch or two uh, nice and crumbly, it's gonna have a dust mulch which in many uh, situations is gonna, is gonna maintain our water down below, which is what we want. But at the same time, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna have that dry top inch or two, which is gonna keep weeds from germinating. Yeah, so here's one finger, here's another finger, and you can see that the plant is right in the middle. And if I do a tug test on these soybeans, see what you think, but at least to me, they're, they're looking fine. We're not pulling anything out. You can see the fingers are running maybe just about a half an inch deep. Um, so like the gentleman asked earlier, if we've got any weeds, you know, like this pigweed that's rooted, you know, deeper than a half an inch or something, uh, it's not going to come out. You know, if we wanted to set them more aggressively, more down pressure, closer together, we could. Um, but if we're getting in here, you know, uh, and we've got white thread stage weeds or cotyledon sized weeds, um, we're going to be flicking them out and, and keeping the, the in row. Well, yeah, here's a little... Perfect example. Erin, uh, you can add this to the university collection. <laughs> that is a good example of a white thread cotyledon stage leaf. That so we that, get weed. yeah, so that, I mean, that's in row and that's that should get pulled out. Uh, well, you can go through corn really small with that too. If you just turn those, uh, those coulters and you pull away, that works really good. We've got two of those, one set one way, one set the other. And we'll go through, it depends on the weather, you know, if it looks like a lot of rain coming, you can actually go out and set them coulters real close and pull that dirt away, you know, and then, hey, let, let it rain. You know, I mean, it, you're, you're just, you got that much closer, so you're not pruning roots. You can set them about seven inches, and we always measure on the inside of the parabolic coulters so we know, you know, that we can set them back. Works great. Uh, reasonable, one shank for cutting, and uh, two parabolic coulters work great. They're pretty reasonable, older cultivators. So you can see in this larger corn how it's basically hilling, and we're or the aim here is to bury these in-row weeds um, through this these last stages of cultivation and our last opportunities for weed management. And actually, it looks pretty good.